Emotional damage, y'all. Emotional damage. Netflix, you will be getting my therapy bill. I thought I was ready for the story. I have read the book. I have put in years with the film. But the way they had me sobbing again. So let's dive in because I got a note. And there's 14 episodes to cover, all right? Honestly, I was like nervous. I was not going to be able to connect because I know the story like inside and out. But y'all, that first episode butterflies in my stomach truly I was like <gasps> I'm gonna love this so much and I just know I'm gonna cry I freaking love Tilly in this show I wanted more of her I thought she was fantastic I am so glad they gave her more of a spotlight in this tv show and I definitely relate to Tilly and I hope that we eventually we'll see more leads like her that you know she's not just a side character now for our leads Ambika Maud amazing as Emma truly amazing I like the way she just had so much emotion without doing too much you know and in this episode alone like just the brown girl vibes and being able to just have a deeper connection to this character because it is being played by Ambika then we have Leah Woodall as Dex and of course he is like going to be the internet's next boyfriend he's just got the perfect charm the perfect look the perfect vibe it is giving George Michael and Leonardo DiCaprio and he gives Dexter this like longing to do better and be better for Emma and I just oh so good I have overall for the first episode, kicking the series off, amazing. And of course, it's all on St. Swithin's Day. So moving on to episode two. Starting off with a bang, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. <laughs> she said, wink, wink. <laughs> and I love that Dexter makes this coffee like, Emma, let me show you, let me show you. minor detail but it's one that I love also the sledgehammer van like the theater cooperative love it so much and I truly enjoy how amazing the actress for Allison May who is truly fabulous and there's just like this invisible string that is seen throughout episode two for Dexter and Emma that I just tr like I just I enjoy a lot and I think it's like you know just like that Taylor Swift song you know that you know, there's always something that ties us, that could tie one of us to like our soulmate. Episode three, we see the famous taco shop. And if you know, you know. Here it is. And there he is. Y'all, I had such an up and down thing about Ian. I never liked him from the film. Never liked him. Well, I can't really remember him from the book, but never liked him from the film. And was like, maybe I might like him. Mm-mm, mm-mm. You will see the back and forth I have. And then they have their like, what a girl wants moment. Why are you trying so hard to fit in when you were born to stand out? Here it is. You have all these people telling you all the time how great you are. You know, smart and funny, talented and all that. I mean, endlessly. I've been telling you for years. So why don't you believe it? Moving on to episode four, the trip with the rules. We love a rom-com where there are rules that the leads have to stand by. And by the end of the trip, we all know they basically break them all. So one thing I love in the show is how they created this longing in episode four. Just the perfection that they had there. I was swooning. Then you had like the curtains that were just floating beautifully that showed their silhouettes. Oh, it was so good. Then we get to skinny dipping, which is basically them confessing to each other that they had crushes on each other. And then, of course, Dexter has to go and ruin it all. And I just think it's precious how she was like, I just twinkle for you. And I was like, oh. So now episode five. One of my favorite things is how much Dexter's parents love M, And it's just like so good. But this episode was truly just heartbreaking because it's the episode where we see him really just be an asshole towards his mother. And then try to just use Emma as emotional support. Where I put, women are not your therapist. Fun fact from the movie, the film, is that Dexter has to go to a premiere and he says it's Jurassic Park, but here it's Basic Instinct. There is depth added to Ian and M's storyline that we don't normally see in the film. And honestly, like I put here, honestly, kind of like Ian in this one. <laughs> Moving on to episode six, where I love how he was just like, if I can't squeak with you, then who can I squeak with? I just want to squeak with someone. <laughs> There's so much Ian versus Dexter in this episode. Like just showing how 
Dexter just uses Emma as emotional support and Ian is truly there showing up trying to do his best for Emma. Something that I love the most about this show is how they show Emma's heart as a teacher and how she truly cares about the future of her student. Episode 7, here we go. Never mind, Ian is freaking annoying. This episode, I was just like, been here and been here recently and Emma, just leave him. He's being a bad guy friend. Because throughout the episode, Dexter was not treating her right. They were supposed to catch up. They were supposed to be, you know, spending time together. And he was just being an asshole. Some of my friends, if they watch all the way through this point, will know who I'm talking about recently. <laughs> Which is why it ended... Dex is an ass and Ian is just, well, Ian. And also this feeling right here, which is like always so good. And they did it perfectly for the TV series. Like the film, it was like, yeah. But for the TV series, it was like, yeah. Episode eight, which started off with like an affair. I was very surprised. I didn't remember that. And then we have a Nokia reference, which I was like, remember those bricks? I love the realization that she has knowing that she's making a difference, which is something she's always wanted to do. And it's in a difference of her students' lives. And it kind of inspires her to write this story that will help, you know, I feel like empower young, young people in different ways through her novels. And so starts Dreams by the Cranberries in the background. And I love it so much. And we get to episode nine, which really didn't have many notes, except if you know the story, then you know why I put, honestly, F Moriarty. And then we get to episode 10, which is the wedding. And we have the reference to four weddings and a funeral. And let me show you what it is. You know, most people are normally late to a wedding, but in four weddings and a funeral, they're always late. This is why, to me, this is a reference to four weddings and a funeral. Ewan. Oh, please. please. Try of luck, sorry. It's car second hand, I don't have to turn them off. There you go. Oh, thanks. Oh, come in, come in, come in. Come in. Oh, shit, your little feather thing. Your little feather thing's been fluttering in the wind since true, our services. God, can you just take it off? No, I can. It's sort of stitching to my hair. Okay, perhaps if I just. <gasps> That's... No, stop. Right, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's just fantastic, and I really love how the show shows more of Tilly and M's friendship. A reference to the book in the toast. I love how this show weaves in parts from the book in the show. It's so good. And then we see them go into a maze. Dex and her finally reconnect. It is, ugh, it is the most like, <sighs> you know, moments. And they go into a maze, they hug, they talk, and then they kiss. I love how they both truly see each other's souls. Like they just have this connection that is so deep and it's so real. We get to episode 11 and we see Dex as a dad and let me tell you, yes, that's all I'm gonna say. Now, my question from episode 11 is, would you have gone over to hang out with Dex if he asked you to? Moving on to episode 12, which is Patty. The conversation that they have in the cafe is just wonderful, it's great. And then we get to see the tension, the argument, because she finally has a guy and she's basically almost gotten over her crush for him. And then he's like, but I love you, essentially. And then she comes back and they get to know each other in the biblical sense, in the best way possible. And the famous, I thought I finally got rid of you. Oh, tears. And then we get to this episode. 13. Unlucky 13. Oh my God. It's unlucky 13. And he asked her to, oh. It was, it was everything y'all, the beginning was, because by the end, the bike scene being so long, why was it so long? Why did y'all make it so long? I didn't need that. But I will say it set it up for episode 14 for me to be just be sobbing. Because look at this. Do you see this? This is the book that M got decked and they referenced it. And then, and then, this is where the waterworks really happened for me. All of the friends like showing up for him. I was in tears, y'all. We also have this classic scene where Emma is basically telling him that, you know, he can get rid of some things. And he's like, I will never get rid of anything. Oh, I was, oh, I was sobbing during that, too. Then him and his daughter climb the same, like, hill that him and Emma climb. And he gets flashbacks of her being like, I'm not just going to be a footnote in your life. And I was like, yes, yes. And then we end it with basically, like, how they first met and then all their kisses that they've had over the past 20 years, and it's just beautiful. There is a reason the story has spanned for so many years. I love this version of it. I'm going to watch it again. You definitely need to check it out on Netflix, but be ready to cry, truly. It is a wonderful story.